So today I would like to go through the Tokyo Olympics official souvenir guide uh, from 1964. Uh, this copy was found in a thrift store um, right near here in Montgomery, Alabama. Um, you can see the spine, it might be slightly out of focus. Uh, you can see the thrift store sticker in the back. And now, this might be a strange book to look through, um, but I kind of realized that sometimes the strange books, the stuff that's really weird, is the stuff that's most interesting to go through. Um, you can find most good books on design and read through them, and that's great. But sometimes things like this have just really weird little bits that are really interesting compared to those books. Uh, just for example, like how simple of a back cover, how just delightfully nice of a back cover. Um, yeah. One thing throughout this book, uh, this is actually gold. Uh, you can't really see it on the camera. I don't think I can. Oh, there we go. You can actually see that they actually did do a metallic gold uh, throughout this. So anywhere where there's gold in this book, uh, they have actually done metallic gold, which is just super cool. Uh, all these little dots are just because it's old. They, they should not be there. Um, please ignore my yellow. This is just uh, so I can open to the pages that I want to open to. Um, there are my notes. Let's get started. I'm going to talk about this red design right here. The Toshiba. Also, that's not the Toshiba logo that we're used to seeing. Um, one really interesting thing here is that one, this is an older style of TV camera we're not used to. But what a simple design, right? See the Olympic colors on Toshiba Color TV. Um, and one thing with this book is I do want to focus a lot on the quality of the design. Uh, the big red circle, right? That's the flag of Japan. You have these circles, you have more circles that get progressively smaller, right? This looks like it's just about half of that. This is just about half of that, and so on and so forth down the design. So you get this really nice reducing circle set up here. Um, one thing also, of course, in the main circle you have Japan, right? Those are the islands of Japan. Uh, and this is just a really, really tiny thing, but something important. When you have something like this, it needs to be just high of center, right? That's not in the center. We're in the top little bit, right? We only have that much from there to the top, and we have that much from there to the bottom. Um, but it gives us... I don't know, it, it floats the object a little bit. So anytime you have that, right? Like, see, these two things are closer together than these two things. It floats this up just a little bit. All right. Let's see. Here again, you can see that gold that's been printed. It's actually a real gold that they did. Not 100% sure how they did that. I mean, there are Pantone golds. Um, so it probably is just a plate that's a separate plate. Uh, one thing that, this is not really a design thing, but just something I thought was interesting. Uh, this is Emperor Hirohito and the Imperial Family. Uh, one, what a very like normal looking scene this is. This is the Emperor of Japan. Um, that was the Emperor of Japan during World War II. Uh, so when you hear about Imperial Japan in World War II, that's your guy. So it's very strange in this, you know, 1964 book that he would still be so so uh, so so prominently displayed. Um, now, one thing I wanted to note with these pages, you can see that there's a few that kind of all look the same. Uh, is just how sim simple this is, right? We have our picture right up to the top. We have no space at all up there. Um, we have our single column of text, and then we have our signature here in the corner. Now the nice thing about that is it gives you this very nice movement, right? We go from this way and we come across. It's very attractive, it's very organic, it looks right, right? Like that's the way that that thing should be. There's no other way that this should be. Now here we've switched to a different layout. Right? We have all of our text to the inside. We have our images to the outside. Uh, so instead of both of these columns being on the left and the images both being on the right or vice versa, here we can put our text to the center and our images to the outside. 
And then on the following page, they do the opposite, right? Images down the center and text on each side. And it looks, even though it's completely opposite, it still looks like those two things go together very, very well. Here we're going to look at another advertisement. Uh, we're going to look at this one over here. Uh, this one's cute, but not super useful. Um, what I really like about this is how simple it is, right? We have 281 years, da 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 all this stuff. Um, and then the list of all of their branches, right? Otaru branch, Sapporo branch, Sendai branch. You can keep going on. And all they did was they took some of those letters. They took some of those. Actually, they're not letters. I'm sorry. They actually took some of those areas and did an outline and darkened just those letters to make the outline of Japan. Right? We still get all the information, but it's not overwhelming, right? If you wanted to look for the city that you live in, you could find it, right? There's London. Where was it? I just saw it. No, I lost it. Yeah, it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, anyway, there's all of these very, very standard... Oh, there it is. London Branch, New York Agency. Um, so you could look for what you wanted to if you wanted to, or you can blur it out and you just see it as the image, and it works very well. Aha, this is more just a little Easter egg. It's not really a design thing, so much as some of you that are into automobiles will like this. Uh, this is the Prince Skyline 1500. Uh, this is the great, 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 great grandfather of the Skyline GTR. Uh, so when you see the Nissan GTR, this is, this is the car that started that. And that's got that monster Godzilla thing that they have now. Well, this is the one back from the 1960s. Uh, and it's really interesting because Prince Mo Motors and their advertisement, they make all sorts of stuff down here. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the in the video, but uh, weaving, equi weaving equipment, water loom or water jet looms, a rocket? I don't even know why they're making rockets, but just all sorts of goodies. Um, so it's just very, very interesting that this is before this was Nissan. Uh, and actually it was before it was um, Datsun, too. Another one. Uh, a lot of these advertisements are going to be for cars, especially during this section. Uh, Suzuki. We actually all recognize that logo. That's very much the logo that they use now. Um, this one's really interesting. This one's really interesting. The Mazda. Look at this. That is not the Mazda lo lo That's not the Mazda logo. Even if you can, even if you can't picture the Mazda logo in your head, you know it's not that. Uh, so it's just really interesting to see how these things change and how, in some cases, they stay exactly the same. Um, and, of course, we never got that car here in the United States. Yeah, cameras. Oh, most of the people who are into design at some point get into cameras. Uh, some of the old Ricos, the Yashikas. Um, they're little cameras, they're Lynx. This was a very popular camera right here. Uh, but I just thought it was neat that they had all of the, their whole lineup is these, you know, six cameras, um, including two video cameras. Uh, we should be very appreciative of the things that our phones can do today, right? Our phones can do all of this and way, way better. Um, let's see, we also want to go to the next page here for Canon. Canon and Minolta, actually. Uh, the Minolta SR7 is a relatively common camera of that time. Uh, the real interesting thing here is this lens here and this lens here. These are the same lens that's on a camera and that's not on a camera. They made a rangefinder copy of a Leica. So this camera is a copy of a Leica. And for that, Canon made a specialty lens that was a 50 millimeter f.95. So that's a 50 millimeter f.95. That's an incredibly bright lens things about that big around. It is referred to as the Canon Dream Lens, and if you have one of those nowadays, that thing's worth like two to three thousand dollars in good condition. Um, if you're one of those companies that makes knockoff lenses, please, please knock off this and I will buy it from you. <clears throat> yeah, if, if you want to see some really interesting image quality, 
uh, out, of, uh, out of a lens, go look up the Canon Dream Lens, or the 50mm f.95, and you will find some very, very beautiful, very dreamy images. But I just found it was so interesting that such a rare lens uh, was, you know, front and center in an advertisement. Ha, huh, a little bit of information. So this gets down to a little more hard, hard design, less just cool history stuff or a pretty design. Now, you can see here that these two columns are all in black. This column down the center is in blue. Now, this up here, uh, just if you, so you guys know, this is all rowing. Uh, so these are, these are all just different kinds of boats. So right, four oars with a cox. That, that's the guy who yells at you when you're rowing. Um, eight oars with a cox, guy that yells at you when you're rowing. Without cox, there's nobody who yells at you. Um, so these are all races, right? So we have year, time, and country, that one for that year. Uh, now, basketball. One, the USA won every time. Go us. Uh, but there's no color differentiation, right? It's just basketball, and then everything's black. Now, we can look at this and say, what really matters here. We, the, these two columns are actually secondary information for somebody who's into the sport, right? The year we know progresses at a pretty regular rate, and the countries we can look at if we want to. But what we're really interested in if we're into this sport is this highlighted column, and highlighted by just being blue, is this highlighted column, which is all the times. So the interesting thing is that this is the win with the time they won at. Right? What time they want at. Now, you can look at these don't just keep getting shorter like you would expect. Um, but that's because some of the other stuff that they do with rowing and some of the, some of the inclement uh, conditions. You can see in the larger boats, it's more linear downwards than some of the smaller ones. Uh, now, problem with basketball is, is there's nothing like a race time in basketball. So we don't need to have a column with the score. All that matters is that you won, right? You don't need a score for these, so you don't put one in. And also, the year and the country at that point are equally important. We don't need a highlighted column because we don't have one thing that needs to separate itself from the group. So it can just be all black. A little bit of information design for you. All right, this I just thought was clever. Right, you take a um, you take a globe, put all the push pins in it where all of your where all your plate where all your places are, uh, and then you photograph it on a black background. How incredibly simple, right? And also, what an amazing way to show emphasis, right? Depending on how this globe is rotated, you can show different emphasis, right? This company wanted to show that they have offices all throughout Africa, uh, the subcontinent of India, all through China and Southeast Asia, um, the northern coast of Australia, um, and in Japan, right? Uh, well, actually, that's their home office in Japan right there. Uh, and then these are uh, South Korea, I'm willing to bet. Um, but then you can see this big cluster over here. And this big cluster over here is Europe, right? This little cluster is probably the Middle East, and then it jumps over the Mediterranean. That's that gap right there. And then this is all the ones in Europe. So this is a really nice way to say this is where we're concentrated. But if you know where things are on a globe, you know that there's also a lot of offices over here. So you don't have to show it, but you can still get the information across. Very clever. Very good idea. Very interesting way to show the globe. <clears throat> So this, this page really isn't about the design of the um, magazine, or I'm sorry, not the magazine, the book. This, um, what did they call it? They called it the souvenir, it's the official souvenir book. Um, I'm not so, so much interested in the design. This is a pretty basic standard layout. It's actually not very consistent. I don't like the fact that there's borders here and there's not borders here. That bugs me. Uh, there's a little bit of a border. It, right there no yes there's a little bit of a border there but there's not actually it's not quite aligned but that's okay uh, that's not what we're here to look at what i wanted to note is this structure this structure and this structure which is the same as the one in this picture here and the same as these little top round things on this picture here 
Now, what those all are, and the reason I want to bring those up, is that those are uh, brutalist concrete buildings. But they're uniquely Japanese. Um, and I think that's something that's really interesting, is you can take something that is so... I hesitate to say atonal, but I'm going to, uh, as atonal as, bru uh, as brutalist architecture, and then make it so uniquely and so identifiably of that country. Uh, I just really like those, those three buildings and, and how they use that style. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. One thing I just wanted to show you guys, these symbols here. Right? We still use symbols that are very much like this, and we know what most of these symbols are. Uh, one thing that's nice to notice is that these symbols change a little bit over time. Not a lot, not a lot, but they do change very slightly over time. Right? Like sometimes you'll see the bottom of these, like the bottom of this little teacup, connected to the saucer, right? And sometimes you'll see it with this very fine line. Sometimes you'll see it with a very big line. Sometimes you'll see it with the little smoke, or, right, the steam coming out. Um, same thing with all the people and all the way they do hands and things like that. They add more or less detail kind of depending on what's the what's in style at the time. So realize that you can really um, telegraph a style just by picking uh, the correct version of what would otherwise be a symbol that you just throw in because that's the one you found on the internet, right? Don't do that. Find the right one that says the thing that you want to say. All right. Oh, this was just a funny historical one. <clears throat> um, this, all of this, right? Some fancy seasoning. All this is, is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the video, but this is pure monosodium glutamate, which, uh, those of you that don't know, that's MSG. So all the stuff that people complain about being in, like, when you go out and get Chinese food, and they're like, this has no MSG. Well, that's just powdered MSG in a uh, container. And it's a very popular condiment both there and in the U.S. Um, so it's fine. If MSG is in something, you won't, you won't die. It's fine. Um, but it's just funny that there's a little kid. One thing also with this little kid, you will, you will almost always see, and you, you'll see this in some other cultures too around this time, that you will see a kid of the correct national origin, and then you see a, and then you see a white kid. Uh, you'll see this in all sorts of stuff. No matter where you go, you see a kid of correct national origin and a white kid. Um, I'm not sure why. It's just the way it works. Uh, I just wanted to show this panel here. I just found it a very attractive panel. Uh, very good contrast, very simple, not complicated. It just gets the job done while still really standing out. <clears throat> Mitsubishi, we all know Mitsubishi, we recognize that logo. Um, this TV I just think is very attractive. It's also a very good photograph. It's a very good product photo, uh, uh, photograph because it's very minimalist, right? There's not a whole lot going on, but in that, in that not going on, we have context. We know how big this thing is because of this teacup, right? Without this, if I block that over, that TV could be 10 inches, 20 inches, 30 inches. I wouldn't really know, right? I could probably guess because the antenna looks a little thick by scale. And if I knew that that was a knob up top, I would know that's kind of a big knob. Um, but with this teacup here, we get perfect scale with one object, and it's culturally specific and very nice. Just so you know, this one's 6 inches wide. Very tiny. <clears throat> I just figured you guys would like to see an old Sony ad and actually a Sanyo ad while we're at it. Um, the old Sony, right? Their logo's changed a few times, but it's pretty much just that text with a word, right? We all recognize Sony stuff looks like that. Again, they'll change their font, but otherwise it looks very much the same. Design styles, of course, changed, but that's because Sony really never landed on one thing that they... Well, it's not really true. They never committed to one thing for all their products. Oh, let's get through all this. What are we looking at here? <clears throat> this, 3M. Look at this page. Uh, one, 
That is not the 3M logo that we are used to. That is one of the older 3M lo lo logos. Look at how interesting it is. It is very much different than what we're used to. But we recognize the scotch with the little plaid on it, right? The plaid looks exactly like, right? If you buy tape, that's what the tape still looks like. The 3M logo is different, but that tape is exactly the same. Um, so it's just very interesting that they have that plaid pattern still, even if they've changed something so seriously as their logo. And they also don't really use that blue color anymore. Ha. Huh. This one. Make sure I'm on the first page of this. Yes. So, this section is just a inter really interesting design choice and one that's kind of um, sexist, I guess. Uh, it's, it's just very odd. Um, the faces of Tokyo, right? We have a description of who all these people are. These are all women. Right? These are all women. It's fine. It's very nice. Now, we're going to flip the page. And all of these are men. Same thing, right? Same same exact context. We have pictures and we have text about who they are. Same thing. What's the difference? The difference is all the women are in color, all the men are in black are in black and white. And now you might say, "Oh, that's just, you know, chance by how the the how the book was printed and all of that." But watch this. Women all in color. men in black and white and you might say well it's just every other page nope because there's men in black and white yet again so i just found that as i was looking through i just found that very interesting right women in color men in black and white we can all make our own assumptions as to why that is um but i just found it very interesting men in black and white women in color Uh, this is just interesting because it's a company we've never heard, or most people have never heard of, but if you own Samsung phone, chances are the front glass on your cell phone was made by this company. Um, mm. and look at this side. Um, Datsun Bluebird, right? This, this company, Datsun, Nissan. Right, they were already doing kind of a mixed brand, brand a mixed branding, uh, and then I think in 1984, 85 in the United States is when they switched over to using Nissan entirely. Uh, so you can see at this point the Prince Company and Nissan and Datsun were still somewhat separate com were somewhat separate companies. Um, one thing I wanted to call out here is one, it's just a very nice photograph. It's also very interesting that nobody is driving this car. Um, in, in American advertising, especially things on TV, the, the car is a very animated object. It's not just part of the scene. Here, it is the subject of the photograph, but it is not being operated. Um, and that's a very interesting thing. But it's also not being operated in the middle of a road. It's real weird. Um, but just kind of take in the difference between this and the, the ads that we are used to. Um, one thing I wanted to note also here is look at the way they've done hor they've, they've done horsepower uh, horsepower horsepower is H and P, right? But this is this strange little combined H and P. If you see this, this is called a ligature, where you smack two letters together for whatever reason. I'm not sure why they did it here. I've not seen that before for horsepower, and I read a lot on automobiles and planes and stuff. Uh, but this a ligature of the H and the P for horsepower. So if you ever see that, that's a ligature. You'll also see um, A and E put together back to back. Um, and you'll see T and T put together and F and T put together. Uh, the F and the T is easier, or the T and the T you can imagine is just two straight lines uh, with the crossbar connecting. Same thing with the F and the T, right? You make, I'm sorry, you make the F shape, you make the straight line for, for the T, and you bring them across with the crossbar. <clears throat> oh, just for a little bit of history. Assembly of a radio transistor by hand. 
Your phone has like billions of transistors in it and they are 100% not made by hand. That is a transistor made by hand and that's a transistor that looks about the size of the end of my pinky. You can't have billions of those in your phone, can you? That technology has advanced quite a bit. Um, and also just for you camera folks, an assembly line for cameras right there. So you can see each camera coming down the line. Ah, one thing I wanted to note here is I want you to look at these characters. These characters are not what we think of when we think of like Japanese anime style artistic characters. This predates that. This predates that stylistic shift, right? Um, these are a completely different style here. You are starting to get a little bit of the overemphasis on eyes in the headlights of this train. So while this is starting to head the direction that we kind of associate with um, 80s, maybe late, late 70s through modern Japanese cul uh, uh, culture, that chibi look, um, this here kind of is starting to have it, but we can see that human characters uh, do not have that yet. And I was not able to find any instance of that in this book. I found one... Um, I found one squirrel, I think it was, um, somewhere in here, but even that was rendered very, very traditionally and was not um, overemphasized in the way that we're used to. All right, here's our always and ever Coca-Cola ad. <clears throat> Coca-Cola ad, one thing really interesting, we have our two white people, right? Same thing as the other thing with the, with, with the white kid. Um, we have our one Japanese lady in the center. Now, look closely. There is Coca-Cola in English on both of these bottles. Look at the bottle she's holding. Look at that. It's not Coca-Cola, or it is, but it's the Japanese characters for Coca-Cola. It's not the Coca-Cola brand like that that we are used to. It does have Japanese text on it, which is a very interesting split here. Uh, you can, again, take away from that whatever you will on issues of race and culture. Uh, just because it was cool, the an old to, uh, an old Toblerone ad. Uh, we recognize these little triangle gold packages, right? Uh, but yeah, the Toblerone ad. Again, for the camera people, uh, Fujifilm, an old Fujifilm ad. You can read through their thing right there. Um, one thing that's interesting is this real big push towards trains in Japan, right? Like we associate high, we associate very closely high-speed trains with Japan, um, and they they actually just go through all of this text about you know why that's good, um, and it's the Hitachi company, right? Hitachi is a company that makes all sorts of stuff now. They make tools and everything. Uh, again, definitely not that logo anymore, but they do make all that sort of stuff. Um, this is one thing I like, right? With a train, you go to the heart of the city in one comfortable seat. Isn't that nice? Um, is that a fold-out page? No. No, it's not. All right, that's the back of our book. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look through this book, the 1964 Tokyo Olympics official souvenir. Uh, as I get time to look through these, I'm going to try to do more uh, just walkthroughs of just cool stuff I find in old books. Uh, these will be design oriented, um, mainly because that's who's watching these videos is my design students. Um, if there's any other specific things you guys want me to look at when I look through these, just let me know and I will try to find those things as well. But in general, it will be an analysis of the design. Pretty flags. Anyway, uh, well, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this recording.